value target is on the field. Season of the Drifter is a big improvement for Destiny 2's annual pass. While it's not overly exciting, this bag of new stuff does some interesting things that hit a sweet spot. You'll get some interesting story pieces supplemented by some new twists on wave-based defense modes and Gambit Prime to earn fancy new armor sets and other gear, plus you'll make an actual decision with actual consequences. Some of the grinding gets to be a slog, but it's otherwise a strong entry in this year's annual pass rollout. Ding, 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 ding. Cabal on the field. Reckoning's arcadey wave-based challenge is one of my favorite activities this time around. Its long-term replayability will likely wane similarly to how activities like Blind Well and Escalation Protocol have, but it adds one important tool that these types of modes have needed for some time now. Matchmaking. While it's definitely more of a challenge hopping in with random players, I still was able to successfully complete Tier 1 and Tier 2 of this event with randoms spilling out the fire team. These tiers will require leveling up a lot, and Bungie had an unfortunate new bug at launch that may have caused armor and weapons to drop below your current level. This made hitting the level requirement a frustrating experience, but once you're in, it's a lot of fun to clear out the Taken and collect your fancy new Gambit Prime armor. Gambit Prime's cool-looking new armor sets evolved the widely loved mode first introduced in Forsaken with pivotal new roles. I chose the Reaper set, which allows me to drop special ammo for allies, keep moats on the field longer, and lets me mark yellow barred enemies to make them weaker for my teammates. I hope Bungie continues this trend and opens up armor set bonuses more in the future, sort of like they did for the original raids. I also wish I could upgrade my Tier 1 Gambit armor set, otherwise it's rather pointless to acquire it at all when Tier 3 has all the best perks. Gambit Prime does seem to have a tricky balance issue with the boss phase though, namely it simply goes on far too long. After you've deposited the moats, the envoys will spawn giving you a damage buff for each round cleared. However, it can become a tug of war when you and the other team continuously invade each other, resetting your progress over and over and over again. Season of the Drifter opens with these two modes at the forefront. Acquiring armor requires playing Gambit Prime to open the Reckoning, and then completing the associated bounties with each mode until you've powered up your synthesizer. Once you've completed three weekly Gambit Prime bounties, you'll be able to acquire a complete set of this coveted gear. My gripe with the system is that it feels awkward and unnecessary to convert your synths to a moat, deposit it, and then return to the device to collect your reward. Why not cut out the middleman and just let us put our synths in the device and receive a drop once the activity ends? One of the most interesting additions by far is the Allegiance Quest. After you've leveled up in Gambit Prime in the Reckoning, the Drifter will present you with a choice. Align with him or rat him out to the Vanguard. This will affect how the Drifter NPC interacts with your character and it's the first time there is an actual weight to one of your decisions in the Destiny universe, even if it mostly boils down to some new quips from the character. You're picking the Vanguard over me, huh? Ah, you punk. For example, if you align with the Vanguard to discover how the Anor story concludes, you'll still get some backstory about the Drifter and get those coveted enhancement cores as your weekly reward, but you'll be called a snitch as you do his main events. Align with him and be rewarded with Gambit Prime Synths and Gambit Gear. This divine makes it one of the most interesting quest lines to date only because there is a bit more weight to your actions. It has also made the Drifter one of the most intriguing characters to date in Destiny lore. Again, a step in the right direction for the Destiny series. Another way Season of the Drifter adds to your adventure is with weekly invitations of the Nine from Xur. These not only reward you with a powerful drop for completing the quest, but also add some incredibly interesting lore moments in the form of a cutscene. At least the first one did, and we hope that continues. On the weapon front, Bungie's finally brought back the Thorn. The quest itself does a lot right. It allows you multiple avenues to progress and has a few throwbacks to Destiny 1, pinging those nostalgia nodes in the brain with some interesting items you collect to advance. However, this quest hits a wall on the Void and Hand Cannon portion that progresses at a staggering slow pace if you're as rough at PvP as I am. The weapon itself feels good in PvP as you get a buff after a kill making it feel like its former self at times. But in PvE, it's extra fun as you can continually pick up orbs refilling your ammunition as you watch your foes melt at your feet. As much as I love Thorn, it would be nice to see what Bungie could do in the form of new exotics hidden behind quests down the road though. Overall, Season of the Drifter is a vast improvement over Black Armory. 
The story moments given throughout your progress really shine through with Zero's new bounties and the Allegiance quests. There are also multiple sets of attractive armor you can acquire, but it's a shame that they can only help in Gambit Prime. It all comes together to make for a much better overall experience than Black Armory ever was, with just a few moments that I don't feel they really reward your time investment. If you're still playing Destiny 2 and you're a fan, and especially if you're a fan of Gambit, then this is an expansion I think you'll enjoy. One quick note, after much feedback about my Black Armory review, I did want to point out that we can always revisit a review should some major new feature roll out that would impact it either way. However, in an effort to inform our audience about their purchasing decisions in a timely manner, I will always wait until the majority of content has been revealed in a situation like the annual pass offers before making a recommendation. As Season of the Drifter only lists one more exotic quest on the roadmap, I feel I was in a good place to make this recommendation. Thanks for understanding, and for more on all things Destiny, keep it right here at IGN.